someone posted a question about you know how to, to choke a uh, distressed texture pattern and we all get that a lot so <clears throat> I was gonna do this real quick and uh, just show you this is a solid spot color and let's say I don't know um, you know in the art file and maybe there was uh, some other kind of junk that was all throughout the art as you see in keyline mode uh, when you look at some of these vector files there's a lot of junk all over the place people painting things white on a white background just to hide them and you can get a, a good idea of what that might um, print like when you take a screenshot of it or you print it out as a flat file to a color printer and you save it or save it as a JPEG so it looks great on screen but then when you try to break it apart and print it out you got a problem there so <coughs> a lot of people can build art but then making it work on press is another skill set um, so this could I, I just drew a bunch of black stuff on there just to represent junk in the art and you need to break it up between these two and here's a uh, bitmap placed texture pattern and let's say you want to throw that over top well you can't for some images because they're already got a white background or something like that so if you uh, <coughs> go to image trace and make expand that gives you uh, something pretty similar that you can use to knock out here I'm just selecting the same fill color and that selects all these little white leftovers delete that select same fill color lock that down make sure you delete out any other junk that you don't have in there that you have left behind and this then can be laid over top as an example and then uh, <coughs> All of it can be uh, under Pathfinder. Um, let's see where that's at. Window, Pathfinder. Um, you can divide after you select it all. Apply that. And then you want to trim. The more textures and elements you have in the art, the longer it takes to process. So now you have, and I, I didn't mask this out either. I should have taken that circle and masked it out from the texture so and these blocks so that all you have is texture over top of the artwork. But you're going to get the idea here. <coughs> So select same fill color, selects all, delete. There, select same fill color, fill color, delete. Now you're left with your texture artwork. Let's say you need to create an underbase for this. I'm going to, to get rid of all this other extra junk out here, I'm going to select the same fill color and lock it. drag over top and delete and then I'm going to uh, select same fill color I don't need to it's all grouped <coughs> I'm going to tell it to overprint in my attributes window and I in order to see my separation preview down here I have to uh, change my document to CMYK color mode, click
click over print and then now I want to copy this paste behind create another color that's going to be my base white that's a spot color so let me go and see my K I'm going to create a little blue here and uh, you can see in preview mode because I have it chosen to overprint you can see in preview mode that it kind of compounds the color and makes it a purple because I use a blue and a pink kind of makes a mauveish purple color burgundy that's in separation preview mode so in order to see this right on that under base let me pull this down here I'm gonna choke that under base with a computer white this will be there is no printing white unless you make it a spot color so the computer or the default white is gonna knock out and that's why you see it turn pink now so I want to set that choke to 0.5 and that's from uh, the center line <clears throat> so it's 0.25 out, 0.25 in. That's just how I do it. You can do it different ways. That's it in a nutshell, what you're looking for. You want to underbase that and choke it so that when you're looking in preview mode or print mode, um, it's all ready to go. That's all on one layer. And I don't have to, when I separate this, I don't have to separate this out, and like add registration marks to both colors and then move one over here off to the page and print this out. I don't have to do that because I've already told it to overprint. And so now when I'm in overprint preview mode, I can see what each color is going to look like by itself. So that's just the base, and then, or that's the base rather, and then this is the actual ink color over top. So that's that in a nutshell. Dot time to end out.